Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tradition Kitchens. I'm Julia. So excited to have you here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. I'm here with Lenka, and we are so excited for today's class. It looks like we have some wonderful returning students in the chat. We would love to know where you are joining us from. So please let us know. Um, we're excited to welcome people. I see Elaine from Florida and Margaret from Boston and Marcy from New York. They show, they're they showing up because um, they have their videos on. So I wanna invite you to flip on your video so that we can meet you and connect and totally understand that everybody's in different places. Hi, Barbara, great to see you again. And I see Sherry is here. Welcome, welcome. We're expecting a great crowd today. And we always love to kick off before people um, get cooking or watching to learn the recipe with quick meet and greet. It's a kitchen cam where we spotlight you and you say hello to everybody. So keep up the intros in the chat. Midori is joining us from Japan. Good morning, Midori. And hi, Lois from Wisconsin. But I am gonna call up Mary Basil. Am I saying your last name right? Um, and would love to meet you. Tell us where you're joining from. I'm Mary Meisel. Um, I'm joining from Tampa, Florida. Wonderful. And how did you find us? Um, I found Baking with Lenka through my dear friend Maeve Alterio, who is also on the call this evening. Um, evening for me, East Coast. Oh, um, but yeah, it was, it's been fantastic. We did her um, puff pastry Christmas tree class in December together. That's um, amazing. I've taken two of Lenka's classes now. So fun, back for the third. <laughs> <laughs> and Maeve, where are you located? I'm in Washington state. So this is um, the way Mary and I can hang out on the opposite sides of the country. I love it. That's what Tradition Kitchen is all about. And Lenka is really smiling and happy too. So thank you. I'm very happy to see so many familiar faces. I'm just trying to scroll from one uh, side to another. I see Janet, I see Chris and Brockett, um, Maeve. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Thanks everyone. And someone is saying hi from Salt Lake. Um, I'm in Park City, Utah, guys. Uh, if anyone is around, uh, let me know. Amazing. We're so happy to learn from you today. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. I think we have time for Maybe um, one more quick hello. I see the Brocket home. Um, I knew you knew I was coming for you just because you look like you're having so much fun in your kitchen. So would you like to unmute and say hello to everyone if you don't mind? Hi, everybody. Hi. We're in Baltimore. We're so excited to be here. Thanks for doing this and giving us a way to connect with the community and give back to of course, we're happy to have you. Welcome, welcome. Um, how did you find us, if you don't mind sharing? We always love learning how people find Tradition Kitchens. We baked with Lenka before, originally through Airbnb, I think. Am I your first student, Lenka, 100 years ago? It's been a while. Probably broken. <laughs> that is so fun. I love it. This is so great. Lenka has quite the following. This is amazing. Thanks for being here. No, I remember Brockett baking uh, with actually her niece and her sister. Um, uh, that was the first time when we baked together. But I see many familiar faces here, guys. Um, thanks again for joining and especially for donating for our cause today. Um, maybe, Julia, you're going to uh, tell us a little bit more. Yes, about perfect. That. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So I think we're going to officially kick off. Um, welcome. So happy to have all of you. I'm Julia. Um, almost three years ago now, my mom and I started Tradition Kitchens as a way to learn about different cultures through food. And we are so happy to have virtual cooking classes. We're nearing our 90th class and it's all volunteer led. Um, so it's home chefs, people like you who are baking or cooking along with us, as well as professional chefs, a mixture of people who share their time and their stories to um, help us build community and connect with people. So we do love meeting everyone. Want to encourage you to keep the introductions coming, say hello as if we were all hanging out in the same kitchen in real life, but here we are virtually. So 
Um, a few housekeeping pieces. We are so um, thrilled to have you. Today's class in particular is um, focused on the incredible pastry that Linka is going to teach us. Um, as part of the class, we have designated it a cooking with a cause class, which means we're raising funds for an important cause. And I know all of us right now have Ukraine and the people in our hearts um, and on our thoughts. Uh, and we want to ask if you would consider, if you haven't already, um, making a gift to our community fundraiser. We're able to track everyone's gift. And I, I just put the link here. And We've raised over $1,800, which is amazing. So thank you so much to everybody. We're raising funds for World Central Kitchen, which is an amazing organization that goes in times of crises and ensures that people have food. And they're doing an amazing job right now on the border of Ukraine and in Ukraine. And it's, it's pretty incredible to see what they're doing. If you don't have um, Facebook, you can give on your own to a cause that you want to um, support, whether it's this one or another, to help the Ukrainian people. So we really thank uh, all of you for your kind and generous support. And we'll let you know how, how our final tallies go. So quick housekeeping. Um, you are all muted right now. If you have questions during the class, feel free to use the chat. If you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand. Feel free to also show your support through reactions to let Linka know that you appreciate uh, as you learn with her. Um, we are recording, so if you have to leave early, uh, we will send you this in the next few days afterwards. And then before I officially turn it over to Linka, I want to invite you to participate in our selfie, our Zoom selfie, a chance to be featured on our social media celebrating our time together, a little memory. So if you could flip on your video, so I'll call out a couple names, hope you'll join us. Uh, Susan, Nancy, Jacqueline, Julie, Arlene, uh, Dory, Eugenia, if you wanna join us on video, we've got about 60 people here today, which is great. And we'd love to have you in our uh, Zoom selfie, which we call a selfie. All right, we've got a good amount of people here. Um, and I'm gonna count us down. So everybody look at your cameras and we'll do, oh my gosh, we have a pet in Brockett's house. I love the dog. Uh, three, two, one. And I'm gonna take one more in case anyone closed their eyes. Three, two, one. Fantastic. Thanks everyone. I am going to turn it over to Linka, our amazing teacher, and so excited. Thank you for sharing your baking and your story with us. So the kitchen is yours. Thank you very much, Julia, for introduction. And thank you once again, everyone, for joining me today, this afternoon or evening, wherever you're calling from. Um, in my class on uh, delicious orange and lavender breakfast buns. Um, for those of you I haven't met yet or haven't baked uh, yet, uh, my name is Lenka. I'm a passionate baker and baking instructor from Slovakia. I'm mostly focusing on Eastern European, uh, Slovak uh, and Slovak pastries mostly. Um, what are we making today? It's a little bit of a uh, maybe touch, uh, my own touch to my grandma's actually uh, breakfast buns that were not originally made with orange and lavender because uh, back in the days, oranges were available just uh, around Christmas, not, not the year round. Same with lavender. So she would make these uh, buns usually with cinnamon, uh, but we'll learn something a little bit different today and very, very delicious. Um, guys, um, before we start, um, just a note, uh, after we are done with making the bun, uh, if it's already laid where you are, you don't have to bake them tonight, actually. You can put them to the fridge once they are made and assembled in a pan and put them to the fridge overnight and bake them fresh in the morning, okay? This is just a note in case you want to have them fresh for breakfast, okay? Uh, if anyone has any questions uh, today, please uh, feel free to write it down to chat or even unmute yourself and ask um, so we can answer your questions. Uh, and one more thing, uh, we'll be working with scale today, okay, so whoever has a scale, grab a scale. In case you don't have a scale, let me know, I'll try to convert measurements to measuring cups, if you're more comfortable working in measuring cups, okay. Any questions, anyone, uh, before we start, anyone, before we start? No, all right, or? 
Nope, I think we're good. And Elaine is here as our backup in case we need to transfer. Uh, no pressure, grams to ounces, but we can also ask ask our friend Google too. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Well, uh, honestly, guys, you don't want to uh, have that measurements for me. Ounces, that's a very new world to me. So I'll give you grams and cups, but uh, don't ask me for ounces, okay? Uh, so if we are ready, let's start. Today's class will take us approximately 45 minutes, maybe up to one hour. Uh, if we are ready, we'll start today with prehydrating yeasts in a warm, sweet milk. I'm going to bend today my camera up and down, okay, just so you can see what I'm doing. So whoever is ready can go ahead and grab a smaller bowl, preferably bowl that you can microwave, okay, glass or ceramic that you can put into your microwave. Um, in case you are not using microwave, you're grabbing a smaller saucepan, okay. You can do this step and warm up your milk either in a microwave or on a stove, either or works. And whoever is ready, I'm bending camera down. We're starting with scaling milk into a bowl or into a saucepan, whichever you're using. We're starting with 100 grams, 100 grams of milk into a bowl, 100 grams. This is approximately half a cup. Those of you who are working with measuring cups today, half a cup of milk or 100 grams of milk. Okay, um, now um, my grandma had a cow, so our milk was always naturally whole milk, okay? That's why I'm usually baking with the whole milk. And if you don't have a whole milk or if you're used to baking with skim milk or drink 1%, 2%, any milk works, okay? And you can actually substitute dairy milk with plant-based milk like oat. That would be milk of my preference, oat milk, okay? 100 grams of milk, which is approximately half a cup. So milk is in a bowl. Into that same bowl with milk, we are adding sugar, regular white sugar, preferably granulated sugar. Okay, into the bowl with milk, we're adding sugar. 20 grams or two tablespoons. 20 grams or two tablespoons of sugar into the bowl with milk. Okay, now we have two ingredients in a bowl. 100 grams of milk and 20 grams of sugar, regular coarse white sugar. Okay, guys, um, just a technical note. Anytime you're working on a recipe that has yeast in it, preferably work with white sugar, not brown, not coconut. Okay, no molasses, only white sugar, sucrose. Okay, two ingredients, 100 grams of milk and 20 grams of sugar. Whoever has those two ingredients in a bowl can go ahead and microwave this for approximately 30 to 40 seconds until nice and warm. Doesn't have to be boiling hot, okay? Don't bring this to boil, only nice and warm. So 30 to 40 seconds in a microwave. Okay. Approximately half a minute in a microwave. And then we are going to grab a teaspoon or tablespoon and mix and stir that sugar in a warm milk. So we want to melt it, okay? Dissolve it. Uh, whoever is heating up milk on a stove, uh, guys, take like minute, minute and a half, uh, bring it to nice and warm temperature. That means when you dip your finger, you should feel it's warm, but not boiling hot. Don't simmer the milk, okay? Um, I'm trying to follow up with those of you who I can see on a camera, so I have idea if we are going too fast or too slow. Whoever is baking today along with me, feel free to turn on your screen so we can... It's Mari! <laughs> Hi, Mari! So nice to see you here. Hi! Hi! Oh, guys! So many. Hi! Big, big. Hey, I'm so this is my boyfriend on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, so many familiar faces. That's amazing. Um, let me know if you have any questions, anyone. Whosever milk is out from microwave, okay, you're grabbing a teaspoon or tablespoon and just stirring and melting that sugar, okay? Stirring and melting sugar in a warm milk. You can always test the temperature. Just dip your finger into that bowl or into that saucepan. You should feel it's warm, okay? It's very important. It should be warm. Anytime you're adding your yeast into the liquid, you want to make sure it's warm, okay? How warm? You don't have to use a thermometer, but when you dip your finger, you need to feel it's warm, not boiling hot. Perfect. First step is done. Milk and sugar are warm. Next step that we are doing, guys, is adding our active dry yeast into that same bowl with milk and sugar. Whoever was uh, heating up milk on a stove, make sure to transfer that milk from the pot into a bowl, okay? Because you don't want to keep heating it. 
heating it up. So today I'm using active dry yeast. Uh, if you don't have active dry yeast, instant yeast will work as well. It's not yeast of my preference, honestly, but if you only have instant yeast, use instant yeast. We are going to add four grams, four grams of active dry or instant yeast into the bowl with milk and sugar. Four grams. Those of you who are using measuring teaspoons, four grams is one big teaspoon of yeast. Okay, one big teaspoon. So four grams or one teaspoon of active dry yeast into the bowl with milk and sugar. And then we're just going to mix and stir dough with yeast in a warm sweet milk, okay? Mixing and stirring our yeast, four grams in a bowl with milk and sugar. When you're taking that spoon out, make sure that you're not taking a whole lot of yeast out as well, okay? Make sure that all yeasts are staying, okay, in that bowl with milk and sugar. So you can even scrap that spoon with your fingertips, okay? Uh, one more note, often oftentimes I get a question, what if my yeasts are uh, kind of in a small lump? They are not completely separated. That's fine. You don't have to try break those yeasts all completely, okay? Just stir it two, three times. And whoever managed to do that, guys, we are covering the bowl with sugar, milk, and yeast, either with a plate or plastic wrap. Okay. You always want to cover the bowl where your yeasts are with plate or plastic wrap because you are trapping warmth and humidity in that bowl, okay? So you always wanna make sure that you're covering, covering that bowl, okay? Milk, sugar, yeast, we are covering the bowl. If you manage to stir those yeast in a bowl and you can place this bowl on side right next to you, okay? We'll give our yeast some time to activate. And in the meantime, we are going to combine the rest of the ingredients in a separate mixing bowl, okay? Uh, I'll make a short stop here. If anyone has question on this first step, prehydrating yeast, uh, guys, um, unmute yourself and ask or write it down to chat. Okay, if anyone would have questions. Barbara wants to know, can you cover uh, the dough with a towel? Yes, yes, of course. You can cover dough with a towel or you probably wanted to ask if you can cover yeast with a towel. Yeah. Right. Towel, plate, or plastic wrap. Guys, it doesn't really matter. The most important is to cover it with something so the milk won't cool down too fast. Okay. And the reason why is because yeast thrive and they wake up in kind of wake up in warm and humid environment. Okay. So you it's humid because there is a milk and it's warm because you're covering it. Will you send out the recipe later? Yes, uh, guys, whoever would like to receive the recipe, just send me a quick note to my email. We'll share your, my email with you after the class, okay? It's bakewithlenka at gmail.com. It's bakewith and my name at gmail.com. All right, so we are done with the first step. Uh, we prehydrated yeast in a warm sweet milk and the bowl is covered. In the next step, we are going to combine the rest of the ingredients together in a bowl. Uh, now, guys, whoever is using today's stand mixer, okay, stand mixer, KitchenAid, or anything else, you can grab that bowl from your stand mixer and you can scale ingredients into that bowl, okay? If you're using stand mixer. If you are not using stand mixer, then you can grab any mixing bowl that you have at home and you're going to hand it, okay? I'm going to hand it today just so you can see all the time how my dough looks. So either a bowl of your stand mixer or medium, bigger size mixing bowl. Whoever is ready can start with scaling flour. So my flour is pre-scaled already here. I'm waiting for you. Whoever doesn't have flour pre-scaled yet, it's going to be 250 grams, 250. 250 grams is approximately two cups, two cups of flour, okay? 250 grams, 250. One hundred and fifty grams of flour, or two cups of flour. Um, guys, whoever is using measuring cups today to scale and measure the flour, you never want to pack that flour into the cup as much as it gets. Okay, you always want to scoop flour into the cup, uh, make it straight with a knife, and then transfer it into your bowl. 
Okay, so two cups of flour, which is approximately 250 grams. Okay, flour is in a bowl. Okay, um, I'm reading the question from the chat. How about the instant yeast and what is the difference uh, in proving instant yeast? Um, guys, instant yeast versus active dry yeast. Okay, real quickly, what is the difference? Active dry yeast, you always have to prehydrate in liquid, just like we did right now with milk. You either want to prehydrate your active dry yeast in a milk or water. It doesn't matter, depends what your recipe is calling from. For if you're use if you're making pastry is usually milk. If you're making bread is usually water. Okay, so liquid. If you're using instant yeast, they are called instant because you can instantly mix them into the flour. You don't have to prehydrate them. Okay, so you can just mix them in. Um, I personally always say that example of, for me, instant yeast is like drinking instant coffee. Okay, if I don't have to, I don't use them. I prefer doing that first step that takes like a one minute, but the pastry tastes actually a little bit better and you cannot taste that yeasty aftertaste in your pastry after it's baked, okay? So that is the difference. Um, okay, all right, so flour. This is where we ended up, 250 grams of flour or two cups of flour. If we have flour in a bowl, we are grabbing sugar again, okay? Regular white sugar. Another 30 grams or three and a half tablespoons of sugar. 30 grams or three and a half tablespoons of sugar into the bowl with flour, same bowl. Okay. 30 grams of sugar, which is approximately three and a half tablespoons white sugar. Okay, white sugar. Third ingredient that we are adding into the bowl, it's salt. Okay, regular table salt or fine salt can be sea salt. Guys, preferably not a Himalayan salt or coarse salt. Don't use that when you bake, okay? Because it will not melt into the dough. So regular fine salt, table salt, pinch or quarter of the teaspoon if you wanna be precise, okay? Pinch or quarter of the teaspoon. So flour is in, sugar is in, salt pinch of salt or quarter of the teaspoon. Uh, always add salt to sweet recipes, okay? It will not be salty. It will just enhance the flavor. Last dry ingredient that we are adding into the bowl, it's optional, only optional. Whoever has a lemon and likes lemon zest, you can shred that lemon zest directly into the bowl with flour, sugar, and salt, okay? Optional ingredient here, if you have a lemon, and if you like lemon zest, you can shred it directly into that bowl with flour, sugar, and salt. If you don't have a lemon at home today or you just don't like it, you don't have to use it, okay? And then we'll have all dry ingredients in a bowl, flour, sugar, salt, and lemon zest optionally. And whoever has those ingredients in a bowl can go ahead and mix everything really nicely, okay? We are really well mixing and combining dry ingredients in a bowl, flour, sugar, and salt, and lemon zest optionally. Guys, feel free to use your hand, okay? We are going to, many of us are going to need a dough eventually manually. If you use your hand when you bake, you have less dishes to wash, okay? That's one thing. And another thing, you are creating a good uh, relationship with your food that you're making, okay? So don't worry to use your hands when you're baking or cooking. It will taste better. Okay, so dry ingredients are in a bowl. Uh, I'm going to wait for a couple moments here to make sure everyone managed to make this first step. Okay. Uh, one last thing uh, I wanted to mention here, guys, if you're adding salt to the recipes where there are yeasts, you always want to make sure that you are mixing that salt well into the flour and you never want to add salt directly into that same small bowl where your yeasts are prehydrating, okay? Salt and yeast always separate because salt can kill or deactivate the yeast, okay? That's why we are mixing this. There is a reason why we are doing this step, okay? All right. 
Dry ingredients are mixed. From now on, we are adding rest of the ingredients into the bowl. We are not mixing anything, okay? Not mixing anything. And then we start with kneading right away. So no mixing from now on. Whoever is ready can go ahead and uh, chop softened butter into the bowl with flour mixture. We're going to use in total 45 grams of butter, 45 grams of butter. If your butter is not softened yet, I see some fridges uh, being opening up. Um, guys, scale your butter and microwave it, okay? For like five, seven seconds, no more than that. You don't wanna melt it, you just wanna soften it. 45 grams of butter. And I just wanna show you as well how softened butter look. So if recipes are calling for softened butter, this is how it looks. You should be able to press your finger through, okay? 45 grams of butter, it's approximately, approximately four tablespoons, approximately, okay? If you don't have a scale. Whoever is adding already butter into the bowl, uh, we're chopping it into smaller pieces, guys, okay? Chop it into smaller pieces because it's going to be easier for you to melt and incorporate the butter, okay? So you wanna chop it. Chop it into smaller pieces, 45 grams approximately, okay? Which is roughly four tablespoons. My butter is right here. I'm not mixing anything, okay? Just adding 45 grams of butter chopped into smaller pieces. Okay, that's the first ingredient. Not mixing anything. Uh, there was a question if we have sugar in yeast and flour and end in flour. Yes, we were dividing our sugar total amount into two parts. One part went into the bowl with sugar, uh, with uh, milk and yeast. One part of the sugar went into the bowl with flour, okay? So we divided that sugar into two parts. Okay, butter is in, guys. 45 grams of butter. Second ingredient that we are going to add into that bowl is egg yolks. We're going to add in total two egg yolks, okay? Two egg yolks. Whoever doesn't have uh, their eggs separated yet, go ahead and separate it now. Separating egg yolks from egg whites. We're only adding two egg yolks, okay? Only two egg yolks into the bowl with butter and flour. Flour mixture, okay? Only yellow part of the egg. Only egg yolk. Mm -hmm. Again, there is a reason why we are only using egg yolk because all the fat in the egg is in egg yolk. That's why pastry made with egg yolk are very rich and fluffy and soft, okay? Pastry is made with egg white dry out faster because egg white we call toughener. It's like a glue. It holds your baked goods together, okay? This is the difference. Uh, so that's why you have to use egg white and whole egg when you're making recipes like cookies. So your cookies won't spread on a whole pan. Okay, it holds its shape. You don't have to use egg white when you're making pastries. Okay. Uh, brioche bread, if you're familiar with brioche bread, guys, it's all made with egg, egg yolks. Okay, that's why it's so rich and so soft. All right, butter is in. Butter is in and egg yolks are in. I'm reading questions. How long do you leave your butter in a microwave to achieve desired soft consistency, seven seconds. If part of the butter melts, that's fine. Most of it should be soft and not completely melted, okay? Seven to 10 seconds, it really depends on your microwave and how cold was your butter, okay? Um, oh, how long you need to leave your butter out on the counter before you, you until you get desirable consistency. It as well depends where you are. If you're calling from Miami or Florida, somewhere in Florida, it might be three hours. If you're calling from Utah where I am, it takes overnight, okay? So I take my butter out from the fridge overnight before I bake with it, if I want it softened, okay? Okay. Uh, guys, we are not using any egg whites. There was a question on egg whites, only egg yolks, okay? Only egg yolks, two egg yolks into the bowl. If we have egg yolks in, whoever is ready can go ahead and check on your yeast mixture. Taking your plate or towel off, checking on your yeast, this is how it should look. Something like this, frothy, bubbly, okay? Nice bubbles, frothiness on top of the bowl. I see Mary's, they look great. Anya, Mari, how it looks? 
What do we see in a bowl? Is there any frothiness? Let me see. Um, yes. Uh, Anya, let me let me know if you don't see anything. Okay. It's hard to me. Yeah, we don't see anything. Do we need to heat it up some more? Uh, got, uh, girls, did you heat up your liquid? We did, yeah. So, did you add sugar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and uh, you're going to pour that mixture into the bowl, but you're going to add extra third of the teaspoon of yeast, okay? Extra. Okay. Add, add extra teaspoon of yeast. One third of the teaspoon of yeast, active dry yeast that you were using. You're okay. going to sprinkle, sprinkle on top of your flour. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. So guys, if someone doesn't see anything whatsoever in your bowl, no frothiness, no bubbles, you cannot smell the yeasty smell. It's usually for two reasons. Either you forgot to add your sugar, either you didn't warm up your liquid enough, or your yeast might be old, okay? And if that's the reason, if the third thing is the reason why, then you wanna add some extra yeast into the bowl. It's going to be approximately one third of the teaspoon. Those of you that see frothiness bubbles, smell that yeasty smell, go ahead and pour everything into the bowl with flour mixture, butter, and egg yolks, okay? Everything goes in, everything goes in. All that milk, if you have a bunch of yeast sticking to your bowl, scrap it, okay? You wanna get everything into the bowl. We're pouring everything in. And then we are going to add last ingredient and we are ready to start with kneading. We got a question about fresh yeast. Uh, guys, fresh yeast, if you have, and if you can find it, I would always go for fresh yeast because they smelled great and they prove your dough faster, okay? Uh, how much fresh yeast you use compared with dry? Two and a half times more. So if you're using today four grams of dry yeast, you would use 10 grams of fresh. That's the ratio that you can always use. You can always convert fresh to dry the same way, two times five, okay? Dries are more concentrated. That's why you're using less of dries compared with fresh. Oil, it's about to come into the bowl, 20 grams of oil. Last ingredient, 20 grams of oil. Guys, uh, neutral tasting oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, not olive oil, okay? Not olive oil, preferably. 20 grams, two zero, 20 grams, 20 grams of oil. And now we have all ingredients that we need for the dough in a bowl. I'm going to real quickly repeat all ingredients in a bowl to make sure everyone has everything in a bowl. Flour, sugar, salt, lemon zest, we mixed it. Then we added 45 grams of butter, two egg yolks, our yeast mixture that consists of milk, sugar, and yeast. And now we poured in 20 grams of uh, oil. Neutral tasting vegetable oil. There's a question, grab seed oil. Honestly, I never tried it. As long as it doesn't have a distinctive smell like avocado oil or walnut oil or uh, olive oil, you should be fine using it, okay? So, 20 grams of oil, uh, coconut oil should be fine, but the thing with coconut oil is that it solidifies eventually at room temperature, and that's what we don't want, okay? So guys, if you don't have any other oil, of course, use coconut oil, melt it and use it. If you have a vegetable oil, neutral tasting, canola, use that one, okay, preferably. Okay. If there will be any questions, feel free to write it down to chat, but whoever is done and have all ingredients in a bowl can start with kneading. Whoever is using today's stand mixer, guys, you will need this attachment. This is what you always use when you're working with yeasty doughs, hook attachment, okay? You're starting with kneading on the lowest speed. On the KitchenAid is usually number zero. So you're starting with number zero and you're kneading it for roughly three, four minutes until everything comes together roughly. And then you're increasing your speed to medium, which is on KitchenAid. Again, it's most common kitchen mixer at home, number two. So lowest speed, number zero, approximately three, four minutes. And then number two for next three, four minutes, okay? And I'm going to show you what you are looking for and how your dough should look, okay? 
Whoever is hand kneading today, guys, <laughs> this attachment is what you need your hand. You will need some space on your kitchen counter. So eventually you can take your dough out from your bowl and knead with two of your hands, okay? If we have questions, uh, unmute yourself and ask or write it down to chat, guys, okay? I'm going to- Hey, Lenka, just one question. I think I might've missed it is, um, I don't have my scale with me today. So it's 20 grams of oil, about a tablespoon. Well, guys, who can help us with that? Uh, yeah, I think look. it's a tablespoon and a half. Who knows? I'm not sure. So you said okay. how much tablespoon? 20 grams to tablespoon is one and a third tablespoon. One and a third. One and a third, if you go with one and a half, that's fine. Okay, that's okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, there is a question about, did we get this about coconut oil as an option? Uh, yes, uh, so coconut oil, yes, you can use it. You will taste that coconut aftertaste, okay? But from the technical part of the recipe, you can use it, okay? It's not, you won't go wrong with using coconut oil. Okay. Um, guys, whoever is using stand mixer repeating number zero first, three, four minutes, and then you're increasing your speed to number two or medium. Okay. Whoever is anything, uh, I'm going to bend my camera down. Your dough should be slowly, slowly coming together. Okay. Very soft, very soft dough. Um, Julia, if you, I can ask you please to read. Um, yeah. No question problem. <laughs> um, so a question for Shannon, she's a little bit late uh, with the yeast, but does it vary um, how much yeast based on your altitude? Is that impacted at all? It does vary. Um, generally yeast, yes, but as well, more than yeast in high altitude is a uh, uh, baking powder and baking soda, okay? Different leavening agents. Uh, in high altitude, I'm in high altitude, okay, Park City, 7,500 uh, feet. You don't really lower amount of yeast. The only difference that will be is a baking temperature and baking time. Okay, guys, I'm going to address that at the end of the class, how to bake this in case you are in a higher altitude, which is anywhere about 6,000 or 5,500 uh, 5, feet, okay? Amount of yeast can stay the same. Right. Guys, if anyone has question, right now is a good time to ask, okay? Because everyone is uh, working on their dough. We can hear each other. Okay, if you have okay. questions on these or how long, how long are you going to be doing that? Uh, hand kneading? Yes. Uh, approximately four to five minutes. Okay. So Menu. Is it might be a good time, Linka, and please anyone let us know if you have questions about the recipe. Um, just to share, you know, what inspired you to begin sharing your your heritage and those recipes, your culture with everybody? Uh, well, um, honestly, what inspired me was my life abroad, away from home. Uh, my husband is from Nepal, and when we moved there, um, three years ago now, I was very much missing my uh, family, my food, my culture. Um, in Slovakia, we grow up eating bread and pastries, right? It's a staple basically in that part of the world, Eastern Europe and Russia. So we eat uh, pastry three times a day. And when I moved to Nepal, suddenly there was a rice three times a day, no bread whatsoever. So, and I couldn't find the breads that I like, right? Kolaches, babka, even these <laughs> breakfast buns, a regular sourdough loaf, you know, sour, regular bread. So that's when I started actually bake pastry for myself uh, because I uh, was missing them. And that's how I, um, that's how I made friends through, through the pastries too, because people got interested in what I was baking because they of course liked it. And uh, that's when I started to teach classes too. So I was actually, my first classes were private, I mean, in-person classes with friends and family back in Nepal. And then somehow it, uh, during the COVID actually grew to more of the online uh, classes with people from everywhere. So there was kind of like a story behind how I started with the classes. I love it. That's so okay. cool. Kind of out of necessity because I was missing the 
the bread and pastry. <laughs> yeah. And I just put your website and I'll put your Instagram in the chat. And if we have time for one more question, what, what could, what should we know about Slovakian cuisine? Like what is special and unique about it that you're most proud of it for? Um, I would say that uh, Slovak cuisine and generally uh, traditional Slovak cuisine, what I like about it is it's naturally zero waste. We don't throw anything. We use everything, right? Any meal, any pastry, any, really any meal that we make and my grandma, my grandpa, my dad, because um, in our family, in our culture, even men are very good chefs. It was not always just women, right? In a kitchen. So uh, we, re we really use everything. Uh, if we are cooking with vegetables, we use everything, the root, the leaves, same with uh, when we are making breads. For example, babka bread, very popular these days. Um, there's a big hype around babka. But back in the days and how the babka originated was in Jewish communities in Poland, actually, when housewives were making a challah bread uh, and they have leftover dough from the challah bread, they would roll it out, sprinkle sugar, sprinkle cinnamon, roll it and break babka, okay? So it was back in the days, basically a recipe for how to use leftover dough. And examples like that, you can find a lot in our traditional cuisine. Our meals are naturally more heavy because the region is colder, right? So you want to stuff yourself with like potatoes, flour, and meals made with flour, bread, sauerkraut, fermented uh, vegetables. In summer, I remember we always used to make like compotes, jellies, whatever we had in a garden, we always used it, everything. So that's what I like about our traditional cooking. And that's what actually... I try to keep when I cook and I bake and even in my classes and uh, don't throw anything, even if your baked products maybe don't look uh, fantastic, you can always bake it and it's always going to taste uh, the same good, okay? So I'm a big um, fan of zero waste cooking, but naturally zero waste, not like make a fashion out of it, uh, but just use what you have, right? That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, a couple quick questions as you're needing. Um, let's see. Um, from Kathy, if we are baking tonight, what temperature should we preheat the oven to? And uh, yeah, answer that one if you wouldn't mind first. Okay, so first thing, guys, whoever is kneading with your hands, if you got dough that it's holding together, stop here. Don't overneat. Everyone can turn off the stand mixers. Excuse me, in case you're using a stand mixer, I'm going to address what we should be looking for in a second. If you're baking tonight, uh, and if you have time to hold with baking your buns 45 minutes after the class, you don't have to preheat your oven yet, okay? If you can wait for the buns to proof, to rise in your baking pan 45 minutes after the class, then you have a lot of time to preheat the oven. If you don't have a time, you want to bake it right after they're assembled, you can preheat it to 370 Fahrenheit. Okay, 370 Fahrenheit. Awesome. Okay, another question. Oh, Anja wants to know, how do you know the dough is ready? <laughs> right. So uh, in total, we are now, guys, needing for approximately 10 minutes. 10 minutes should be enough for everyone because we are only working with half a pound of flour, which is roughly 250 grams. I was hand kneading my dough. Surface of your dough should be smooth, okay? At the beginning, it was cracky, crumbly. Now it should be smooth. When you pull your dough, it should, should nicely pull, okay? It shouldn't tear apart right away. It should be pulling, okay? Pulling. Your dough shouldn't be sticking to your hands. That means that you're able to put it from one hand to another, okay? Not sticky. If you got the dough like this, that's it. If I'm kneading it on my work desk, it's not sticking to my work desk or my fingertips. That means it's done, okay? Uh, one more note here. You are not trying to look for a window pane test. That means when you pull the dough, you could see through, you're not really developing that much gluten in this particular recipe because it contains a lot of fat, okay? So this is to the dough. Guys, if anyone has very wet dough, that means it's sticking in between your hands, you couldn't, cannot put it from one hand to another, add more flour, 
Okay, if anyone is struggling with the dough, write it down to chat or just unmute yourself and ask. Okay. And otherwise, if you have this kind of dough, that means again, smooth surface, you can pull it, you can put it from one hand to another, that's it, you're done with kneading. Okay. Um, there's a question about bread flour. What is bread flour and could it work or could it not? Bread flour could work. A difference between bread flour and pastry flour or all-purpose flour is a percentage of the protein. Bread flour has approximately 14% of the protein. Protein is gluten, okay, gluten. Uh, it basically makes a stronger, stronger gluten strains that are holding together tighter. That's why it's better for breads where you need to trap a lot of air and it will grow and puff and those air bubbles are not breaking easily because it has a lot of strength because of the gluten. Regular all-purpose flour has around 11% of the gluten, which is great for pastries because it's not too chewy, okay, not too bready, but still not too soft. So it will hold its shape, okay, that's the difference. You could go with bread flour, but your pastry will be more chewy, more bready. Got it. And I think we, we might save the question about, you know, um, meat and uh, cult, Slovakia culture for in a little bit, if that's okay. And we'll just go to the next step with the, with the breakfast buns. Right. Um, yes, I'm going to resp uh, respond to that question, but um, whoever is done with the dough, guys, put your dough back into the bowl and cover it. Towel, okay, cover it with a towel. Today we're going to prove it just for a short time while we are mixing the filling, okay? So this will take us today seven, 10 minutes. Whoever was hand, wa hand kneading, wash your hands, guys. You can put ingredients that you don't need anymore away, like milk, like yeast, okay? We don't need that anymore. Uh, I'm going to wash my hands as well. And you can bring closer uh, ingredients that we need for the filling. Okay, that we're going to mix just in a second. For the filling, we'll use butter, we'll use sugar, we'll use a little bit of cinnamon, we'll use a little bit of salt, and we will be shredding orange zest into that filling as well, okay? So repeating, butter, preferably softened, and that's very important when you're mixing it, excuse me, into the filling, okay? So butter, sugar, cinnamon, orange that will be zesting into that filling and a little bit of salt. We're going to combine all of those ingredients in one bowl. So I'm just going to grab a bowl. And let me know if anyone needs more time here, okay, to hold up. You can raise your hand or you can write it down to chat, like give me a minute or two. Yeah, we need some time, sorry. Okay, okay, Anya, uh, prepare all ingredients. Everyone gather all your ingredients for the filling closer to you. We'll be using one mixing bowl. Okay, we're going to mix all ingredients for the filling. We'll be mashing them with a fork. So whoever is ready can grab a fork. And then uh, whoever has a scale, we're still going to use it, okay, scale. All right, and we'll start with ja in just a few moments. Uh, guys, those of you who, whoever is ready and your butter is not softened yet, you wanna soften it, okay? In total, we are going to use today 60 grams of butter, 60 grams of butter, six zero. Whoever doesn't have a scale, 60 grams, it's half a stick, okay? A little bit more than half a stick, like half a stick and tiny bit more. So 60 grams in total. Uh, I'm trying to read the question in the chat. Lavender doesn't go into the filling yet. Okay, we'll be sprinkling lavender on top of the dough once this filling is spread. So whoever is ready guys, can start with adding butter into the mixing bowl. 60 grams of butter into a mixing bowl. Again, approximately half a stick. Okay, half a stick of butter. Six zero, 60 grams, half a stick of butter into a bowl. Whoever is behind, I'm going to repeat this few times. 
Uh, sorry, I have a question. Go ahead. And uh, uh, if I use a whole wheat uh, flour, that would that be different? Uh, yes, a whole wheat flour and has a bran in it. Okay, it's uh, it, uh, the whole wheat flour. It's grind whole. Okay, with all three parts of the grain, because it has bran in it. It's more thirsty because bran it's soaking up more liquid. Difference is that you're adding more liquid. How much more? It depends how much whole wheat flour you added into white flour or purpose flour. Generally, one, two tablespoons is good uh, amount of liquid to start with extra, okay? And then it really depends on the recipe and it really depends how much of that whole wheat flour you're using. Okay. Okay, thank you. If I'm, another question. Uh, if I'm going to uh, bake uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, should I prepare filling now or tomorrow morning? We are preparing everything together, guys. It doesn't matter when you're baking, we are moving on together, everyone, okay? All right, butter, 60 grams of butter in a bowl. Into that same bowl with butter, we're adding equal part of sugar. 60 grams of sugar, 60 grams of butter. With sugar for the filling, you can choose if you wanna use white sugar, brown sugar, or combination of white and brown, but you wanna end up with 60 grams in total. I usually use a combination of white and brown sugar, okay? White and brown sugar, but you can choose just white, just brown. In total, you wanna have 60 grams of sugar in your bowl, equal parts. 60 grams of butter, 60 grams of sugar. Two ingredients. Third ingredient that we are adding into the bowl with sugar and butter is a salt. Same amount, pinch of salt, less than a quarter of the teaspoon. Pinch of salt, a pinch. Okay, a little bit of salt, just to balance the sweet flavor. Pinch of salt. So butter, sugar, salt, pinch of cinnamon, guys, approximately quarter of the teaspoon, okay? This is not really a cinnamon filling. Uh, it's not cinnamon sugar filling. So a little bit of cinnamon just to bring up the flavor, not a whole lot, a pinch, quarter of the teaspoon, okay? So butter, sugar, uh, cinnamon, and salt, four ingredients so far in our bowl. Next ingredient, we're going to shred and zest one orange, okay? Orange zest. So I'm grabbing my zester right here, okay? I'm going to, this is a Parmesan zester, okay? For the cheese. I'm going to zest one orange, whole orange, as these are orange buns. Okay, we're zesting orange. Guys, anytime you're zesting orange or lemon, doesn't matter which one, you always want to zest just that very outer, either orange or yellow part. It depends with what are you shredding, okay? Uh, very orange part, not that white fibrous part under. Don't shred that because that's bitter, okay? Only flavorful part is that outer part. Okay, so we're shredding zest from one orange. Repeating ingredients. Butter, sugar, equal parts, pinch of cinnamon, pinch of salt, and now we are shredding zest from one orange. Okay. Guys, no lavender. Lavender will come later. Okay, no lavender. All right. Castor sugar, granulated or castor sugar, is that recommended? Castor sugar, uh, I believe it's a co more coarse. Uh, granulated is finer. It doesn't really matter uh, in this recipe. As long as it's not powdered sugar, you can use either or, okay? And whoever has all ingredients for the filling in a bowl already, guys, can go ahead and start meshing everything nicely with a fork, with a spoon, or with your fingertips, whichever works better for you. We want to incorporate everything nicely until we get a spreadable consistency, okay? 
If your butter is softened, but it's very hard to mesh it, it's hard to get it together into a paste, you can always microwave this for roughly five to seven seconds, no more than that. I'm going to do it right now because my butter actually hardened. It's not as soft. Five to seven seconds, you don't want to melt that butter. You want to be very careful, careful not melting butter. That's important, okay? Not for the filling. You don't want to melt it. Short time in microwave, five to seven seconds, and then try again, okay? How is it meshing? It should usually help to get this feeling right, okay? Nice and spreadable. Mixing and meshing everything. I'm using my fork here. You can use a fork or fingertips or spoon. Okay, really well incorporating. Okay, and this is something we're looking for, guys. When I put it on my fork, it's like a paste. Everything is nicely incorporated, okay? It's nice and spreadable, like a paste. Imagine almond butter or peanut butter. It's the same consistency, okay? You want to imagine that you're able to spread this with knife or spoon on the dough, okay? On top of the dough, you want to spread it. So if it's not really at spreadable consistency, don't worry to put it to microwave, just watch it, okay? Five, seven seconds. If we have a question on the filling, guys, or anything else, ask while we are working and meshing, okay? If anyone is struggling, has a question, please unmute yourself or write down. Okay. Uh, and my, my quick question, uh, Julia, is my camera breaking or voice? No, I think you're good. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. All right, guys. So mixing and meshing the filling, you should already smell that orange coming out, a little bit of cinnamon. Very nice and flavorful filling. Awesome. Uh, okay, you can hear me and see me well. Uh, that's probably then from my side. Um, some of your videos are frozen. That's why I'm wondering. Okay, guys. So we are mixing and finishing up the filling. Just to give you a heads up, we'll take another 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, I, I was talking a lot today in our class. So we'll take and go a little bit over time 10, 15 minutes, and we're done. Okay. Whoever is still working on the feelings, uh, take your time. Whoever is done, we are getting ready for the last part of the class when we are going to roll out the dough, spread the filling and assemble the buns. So uh, what do we need for last part of the class is a uh, flour, keep your flour close by. We will need a rolling pin. Who doesn't have a rolling pin, then an empty wine bottle or water bottle works. Okay, so that's the second thing. Uh, space on your work desk. We are going to roll out the dough on the work desk, okay? So make sure that you have some space. Make sure that it's clean. Okay. Uh, guys, you don't have to put anything on your work desk, okay? Like kneading mat or chopping board. Don't do it because your dough will stick to it. Simply clean work desk, okay? You can roll out the dough on any type of work desk. Wood, plastic, granite, anything, okay? What else we need? So rolling pin, flour, our filling, okay, that we just mixed. Filling will be spreading either with a tablespoon or if you have something like this, offset spatula, you can use it. If you don't have it, don't worry about that. You can use a, you can use a knife, you can use a spoon. You don't need this, okay? Lavender, one more ingredient, whoever has a lavender, dried lavender, we are going to sprinkle it on the dough after we spread the filling, okay? So dried lavender. If you don't like lavender, you don't have to use it, okay? Again, this is very, uh, I would say like, you either like it or not, same like with cardamom. Okay? If, you, if you like it, you can use it. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Just to show you the lavender, this is how it looks. It's dried, okay? It's dried lavender buds. It's nice. I, I like to add a little bit, not too much. Okay. And the last thing that we'll need today is a baking pan. But I'm going to show you 
in a bit, okay, what options you have and how you can, um, how you how and where you can bake your bounds. Where do you buy dried lavender? I bought it in the world market, uh, maybe somewhere else too, online for sure you can get it guys, okay. So if you're ready, I'm going to bend my camera. Anyone has any questions before we, are, we can start? I see a question about, could you use cardamom instead sure. of lavender? Sure, yeah. sure, whoever likes cardamom guys, cardamom in powder, dried cardamom, you can just sprinkle on top as well, okay? You can go creative. I mean, whatever you like, you can use, of course, okay? And I see that some of you are trying to show me guys your cameras. I don't know why most of the cameras are frozen for me. I see few people moving around. And some of you are just frozen. So maybe try to turn off your camera and turn it back on so I can actually see you better, okay? All right. So if we don't have any questions before we start, I'm bending my camera down. Whoever is ready can go ahead and sprinkle flour on top of the work desk, okay? Just like this, sprinkling flour on top of the work desk. And then we are grabbing our dough out from the bowl, placing it in the middle of that flowered work desk, and you can flatten it with your hands, okay, with your fingertips. So anytime I'm rolling out the dough, I like to flatten it into a disc because it's easier to roll it out, okay? Same thing, we're adding a little bit of flour on top of the dough. You wanna make sure that as you are rolling out your dough, it's not sticking to your work desk, okay? So if you keep adding more flour, that's fine, okay? Go little by little. Whoever is ready can start with rolling out the dough into a rectangle. That means one side is longer, one side is shorter. How big the rectangle should be? You can just follow my screen on a camera to show you approximate size. When I put my rolling pin on top of my dough, it's, it's going to be slightly as long as my rolling pin and three quarter of the length of my rolling pin. Guys, honestly, I never uh, measure these like exact measurements. I'll show you how thick the dough should be, okay? Once I'm there. So keep rolling out your dough, try to go into uh, equal thickness, okay? Equally thick everywhere. And Linka, how do you know the dough is ready to be rolled? Uh, so today it's ready because we are all moving on together. Uh, you can actually work with this dough right away and let your buns that we assemble proof in a baking pan. Or you could wait with this dough to rise slightly, roughly 30%, and then move on with this part, okay, of the recipe. Guys, I'm baking this quite often for almost four years now. So I don't really see a big difference uh, in this particular recipe if you're proving the dough or not. You want to prove it, but it doesn't really matter if you're proving it before you assemble the buns or proving it after you assemble the buns. If any of those two, then I would prefer proving it after you assemble your buns in a baking pan. Okay. Here, here's my dough guys, lengthwise, roughly a length of the rolling pin widthwise, three quarter. When I spread my hands on it, I could fit three, three palms of my hands lengthwise, okay? If I show you the thickness, let me cut out the part of the dough here. It's approximately here guys, whoever can see, this is approximately two to three millimeters. So it's not paper thin. You don't need to see through, okay? You don't need to see through, but it's a fairly thin dough. Okay, that's a thickness. Whoever is rolling out the dough and it's not very familiar with rolling out the dough, if you're not getting perfect rectangle, you can always pull the edges, okay? With your fingertips to get the, get the edges there. Rectangle, not an oval, okay? You can always hide imperfections by cutting out any not nice part. But honestly, guys, I would not even do it because we are rolling it and it will all disappear, okay? So rolling out the dough. Whoever managed to roll out the dough, guys, dough is nice and thin, evenly everywhere. 
and go with your hands once you are done all over the dough, okay? To make sure that you roll it out evenly everywhere because sometimes we have a tendency to leave edges thicker. If your edges are thicker, then you're just rolling out the edges, okay? And whoever is ready can start with spreading that orange and orange and butter filling evenly everywhere, all over the dough. Okay. Again, you can use here spoon, you can use a spatula, you can use whatever you like. Okay. Taking my filling out from the bowl. Okay, and we're spreading, spreading that feeling evenly everywhere. Guys, you can go almost all the way to the edge, okay? Almost all the way to the edges. Nicely, evenly everywhere. You can see your dough through the filling, okay? It's not like a thin layer of the filling, but you wanna spread it everywhere, everywhere evenly, okay? Whoever here would like to use cardamom, there was a suggestion to use cardamom is most welcome. Okay, so spreading the filling, I'm just washing my hands. Spreading the filling evenly everywhere, all the way to the edge. And whoever is working with lavender today, dried lavender, can go ahead and sprinkle the dried lavender on top of the dough now. How much dried lavender? For me, it's one teaspoon. I like it not to overpowering flavor. So if you want to measure it exactly and precisely, one teaspoon of dried lavender, just sprinkle all over as well. Okay. So spreading the filling, sprinkling lavender or cardamom if you're not using lavender. If anyone has any questions here, let me know. Okay. All right. So guys, if we manage to do the second step, spread the filling and sprinkle lavender, we're almost there. We're going to roll the dough nice and tightly, just like you would do it with cinnamon rolls, breakfast cinnamon rolls from one side all the way to another. Okay, from one side to another, nice and tightly. Okay, you're rolling your dough nicely and tightly. And you're always rolling it from the longer side. Whichever is your longer side, you're rolling it that way. A okay, longer side. Okay, rolling, rolling, rolling. Sorry, do we, do we uh, spread the sugar on age of the dough? Yes, yes, we are spraying that sugar butter filling everywhere, all the way to the edge. Okay, thanks. Okay, all the way to the edge. Uh, I'm trying to follow up with those of you guys I can see, okay, to understand where we are. All right, so we're spreading the filling evenly everywhere, all the way to the edge. And then whoever managed to do that is just rolling the dough from one side all the way to another. Okay, all the way to another. Seam can be up or down. It doesn't really matter because we're going to cut the roll, okay, into individual parts. All right, perfect. Whoever managed to roll the dough, and again, we're rolling it tightly and the longer way, can go ahead and grab either a knife or pizza cutter or dough cutter, doesn't matter, and cut individual pieces of the roll. How thick they should be. I usually put three of my fingertips, three, three fingertips on top of the dough and cut the size roughly like my three fingertips. To bring it closer to camera, this could be the thickness. Okay, guys, can we see? Three fingertips. That's how I cut my roll. Okay. So you can get anywhere between 10, 12, maybe someone gets 13 pieces uh, approximately, okay? Somewhere around 10. I love the shape. It really, like I see the roll coming together. It looks beautiful. It's It looks beautiful guys and it will taste fantastic. <laughs> it's even better. Okay. 
it will look really, it looks good, but it will taste even better. So this is something we, we have, okay? We should have rolls. All right. If we manage to do that, I'm going to show you guys how you can assemble these and eventually bake it. So there are a few ways how you can actually bake uh, breakfast buns. What I'm going to do today is going to, I'm going to use this small six inch baking spring form or pan. I'm going to put my buns into that spring form one next to another. And basically I'll end up uh, a greasing part. You can grease this, okay? In case you're using a baking pan. Grease it with butter, or you can even spray it with oil, okay? Or brush it with oil, doesn't matter. So that's the first way how you can bake these buns. You're going to assemble them into smaller baking pan, and it can be round, it can be square, it can be rectangle. It doesn't really matter what shape, okay? It will look something like this, one next to another, almost tightly in a baking pan. That's the first way how you can bake this. Another option, how you can bake these buns, let me just grab it, is a muffin pan. You can bake them individually in a muffin pan. If you would prefer baking them in a muffin pan, I recommend lining it with muffin cups, okay? Muffin cups and placing your buns into individual pan uh, molds, okay? In that way, you'll get individual buns, okay? So that's the second option. You can choose whatever you want or something like this, okay? Holding them together in one pan, okay? If anyone has question on the baking pans, let me know. Okay, you want to grease it or you want to line it with muffin cups, either or, so it won't burn. Okay, uh, grease the pan, yes, grease it with butter or oil, doesn't really matter. Okay, or you want to line it with muffin cups. And from here, uh, I'm going to give you instructions how to bake this and how to it is, it's this, okay? So guys, first of all, whoever would like to bake tonight, okay? Not waiting till tomorrow. You wanna cover this with uh, probably a towel. I would recommend grabbing a towel and just cover it and let it proof if you have time for approximately 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, it will puff, okay? This will puff up a little bit in size. Then you're ready to preheat your oven to 370 degrees Fahrenheit, 370, 370. And you're going to bake buns for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to repeat. Whoever is baking tonight is covering this now with a towel, letting this proof for 45-ish minutes, 45, 50 approximately. Then you're preheating your oven to 370 Fahrenheit. Did I mention egg wash? I don't know. Uh, if I didn't mention egg wash, guys, you're going to beat one whole egg, egg yolk and egg white, brush it, nicely brush it, egg wash it. And then you're baking it for 25 to 30 minutes until you get something like this. I'm showing it on camera. I baked one bun before the class, golden brown color golden brown color this is already sprinkled with the powdered sugar okay don't get confused golden brown color 25 to 30 minutes if you're baking this in a muffin cups it's going to be less time we already got a question in the chat about that it's going to be approximately 20 to 22 minutes not 30 20 to 22 but you really need to check because every oven bakes differently golden brown color if you press your bun from top it should be slightly bouncing back. It should not stay down, okay? If you press it and it's not bouncing back, it means that the dough inside is raw, okay? With muffin cups, it's easier because you can always pull one out and see, okay? So my experience, muffin cups, my oven, 370 Fahrenheit, 22 minutes, 23 sometimes. If you bake it in one big pan, approximately half an hour. Before you're baking it, egg wash it and bake, 370 Fahrenheit. If you're baking tomorrow, you're going to wrap this into, either you can put it to Ziploc bag and seal it or put it plastic wrap on top. 
put it to the fridge and let it be there until tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning, you're doing the same thing. Preheating your oven to 370, egg washing your pastry and out from the fridge, you can bake it right away, okay? You don't have to let it come to room temperature. Out from the fridge, into the oven. If you're baking pastry that comes from the fridge, it usually bakes for a little longer because it's cold. So approximately five more minutes, okay? Okay, it's easy guys, nothing to complicate it. Don't forget to egg wash, one whole beaten egg, nicely brush your pastry, and then just bake it 370, 20 to 30 minutes, depends on if you're baking it now or tomorrow, depends if you're baking in a pan or in a cups. Easy. Perfect, we got here guys, nice work everyone. Um, <laughs> questions, guys, questions? Looks like was that. there orange juice used? Orange juice we're only using at the end. So once your uh, buns are baked, okay, taking it out from the oven, that's when you are actually using that orange that we were zesting. Don't throw it. You're going to slice it in half and just squeeze the juice all over those hot buns, okay? So they soak up that orange juice, okay? And then you can sprinkle them with some powdered sugar if you prefer. Uh, or not, okay? But orange juice gives them nice moist, a nice moistness inside. Okay, so that one orange, one orange. How to store buns and for how long? Uh, no, hopefully we don't have to store anything because we're going to eat it all fresh. But if we have to, then um, uh, buns you always want to store after they are completely cold, so cool down completely. After that, Ziploc bag or into a um, maybe maybe into a bowl covered with a lid. So something where you can prevent from buns and direct uh, contact with the air. Okay, so they won't dry out or cover them with a towel. I would say either within two days, three days, you know, pastry is best when it's fresh. In case you won't be able to eat it at all, then put it to a freezer. Okay put it to freezer and then just reheat it when you feel like having orange buns. Wow, sounds amazing. How'd everybody do who's, who's baking along with us? Show us. Yeah, I'm gonna add a few people. Um, Mary, I'll add you the spotlight, Anya. Let's see, anyone else wanna be, let's see. Oh, Michael, great to see you. Thanks for being here and baking. And oh, Shannon, this looks awesome. We have so many people. And I see Mary and wow. It's awesome. Oh, and Rocket Hole, let me add you all too. So we've got six folks up here on the chat. Well, guys, this look, uh, this look great. Um, very nice work, everyone. Moving on so smoothly and nicely. Yeah. Would you repeat the part about what you said about an orange? Right. Uh, so, Align, uh, orange after your big after your buns are baked, okay, out from the oven and right away when they are hot, right out from the oven. That orange that we we're zesting, you're saving for tomorrow or tonight. Uh, cutting it in half, squeezing the juice all over those okay. hot buns. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Lenka, can you just repeat real quick? Um, if I'm baking these tomorrow, I have them in the pan. Do I proof them out on the counter for what'd you say, like 30 minutes? Whoever is baking tomorrow, guys, do it right now so we won't forget. Wrap this in plastic wrap yep. or put it to Ziploc bag and right into the fridge. Right into the fridge. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, right. What's happening if you have a pastry in a fridge? It's still proving, but it's proving very slowly because the temperature is low, okay? So yeast are slow, slow. So they're proving, but very slowly. So they're actually developing more flavor. Egg wash, how to use it? You're cracking one whole egg, egg yolk and egg white into the bowl, beating it with a fork really well, and then grabbing a brush and egg washing nicely everywhere, okay? One egg doesn't mean that you have to use it, okay? Just beat it, whole egg. Doesn't mean that you have to use whole egg, okay? Uh, guys, I know that some of you have to go. Uh, we were going a little bit over time, but we all did great. If anyone has any question or would like to receive the recipe, uh, 
And I actually can send you the sourdough version of the recipe if anyone got into sourdough baking recently. Send me email. I think we uh, sent already my email address to chat. It's bakewithlenka, bakewith and my name at gmail.com. Uh, I'll be happy to assist you with the recipe or answer your questions. I'll be available tomorrow. Uh, if you would like to get inspired by more traditional recipes, then uh, please visit my blog where I share a lot of traditional uh, Eastern European recipes, my family recipes. And I, of course, will be very happy to see you uh, in some of my other baking classes that I teach okay, every month. So if anyone is interested in joining uh, some other classes, I'll be very happy to see you there. That would be so fun. I can't wait to check out more of your classes. Linka, this was amazing. Um, let's all give her a virtual round of applause. Feel free to unmute and clap or show your favorite emoji. I love it. I'm seeing lots of hearts and party horns and party fingers. So Linka, thank you. I put the link to your website. Great. It was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Yamato and Amber. Hi, guys. Uh, I just saw that you're here too. Uh, hopefully it went well. Thank you, everyone. So we'll keep in touch. Uh, everyone, enjoy your buns tonight or tomorrow and we'll to get, uh, together again. Thank yes, you. thank you. Absolutely. And uh, just a quick closing announcement for everyone. Um, you will receive an email in the next few days with this recording so you can follow along. I'll cc uh, bankingwithlenka at gmail so that you can follow up with her directly for those recipes. And then um, we're taking a little bit of a spring break for the next couple of weeks at Tradition Kitchens, but we will be back in April for some fun cooking and culinary adventures. All of our classes are led by volunteers. So if you are passionate about sharing a story behind a recipe, just like Lenka was, please reach out. And we do hope that you'll support our teachers uh, like Lenka and attend her classes. And we thank her so much for her time as well as everyone else. So with that, have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. And we hope to see you in April. Bye everyone. Thank you, Julia. Thanks, and thank Julia. You. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and um, we've thank raised you. about $1,900 for World Central Kitchen. So we'll include that um, as a reminder. So we're close to really, really making uh, an impact as a community. So thanks, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.